Stepping with Marcus J. We're back. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us. About that time where we kind of transition towards the end of the show. We got our rants and we got our closings. But before we do that, we got a special guest joining us on the live line that wants to share some information with us. Special guest, why don't you tell us who you are and what you got to talk to us about? This is Arthur Charisma. How y'all doing today? We doing great. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I just, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just wanted to let everybody know about two special events this month, um, both on the same day, February 23rd. Um, I have the Warm Hearts for the Homeless Drive that's at 1030, and um, I'm looking for donations. So anyone who is willing to uh, donate food, water, personal items, clothing, they can get in touch with me on Facebook. Author Charisma, that's K-H-A-R-I-S-M-A, or they can call my business line, that's 804-252-6562, and, um, you know, I can get those donations and get them ready for the 23rd. Um, later on that same day, we have an event at 4 o'clock, um, the Heart to Heart BP Love Revolution, and um, you've been there, you know what that's like, it's a lot of fun, it's about um, relationships and a forum at the Island Bistro, um, where, you know, we just discuss stuff, we eat, we laugh, we drink, we just have a ball, and um, at the same time trying to um, increase awareness about relationships. All right, that's Author Charisma. Definitely make sure that you partake in her events. One more time, give us the name of those two events and how they can contact you on information. A warm heart for the homeless. That is February 23rd at 1030. And the DP Love Revolution Heart to Heart is at 4 o'clock on the 23rd at the Island Bistro Bar. That's 18th in Maine. And you can hit me on Author Charisma on Facebook. Or you can call my business line, 804-252-6562. You got it. That's the dating pool diva, everybody. Author Charisma joins us every uh, every final Monday of the month. So you'll be hearing from her in two weeks, and she'll have her normal segment where we get into the Diva Diaries. Charisma, appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you for having me on tonight. You got it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J., that's the end of the show, basically. We're going to get in to our rants and then our closings, as we do every single week. We always give our guests uh, first dibs on getting something in. And, of course, tonight is no different, so we got Miss Tony. What you got, girl? Thank you. Had a good time with you guys. Um, I'm all hyped now after that last segment. I'm ready to go. Like, I'm going to see you and Carlton Banks <laughs> on the parking lot. It's all in love. It's all, it's all in love. It, it, it's all in love. It's all in love. Me and him, we, we, we never agree pretty much on any subject. Uh, we don't agree. And so we've been having those kinds of spirited arguments and discussions, rather, for the better part, almost, what, 15 years or more. So Something like that. Yeah, it, it is what it is. So, Tony, what you got? How you want to end the show, girl? Um, just want to tell everyone to stay safe. And uh, I know Valentine's Day is coming up. And... For those of you who are single or don't have a serious significant other, don't stress out. Don't be sad. Don't be blue. You know, it really is just another day and it's all a ploy to increase sales. So don't give in to the hype (laughs) and just seriously, like just enjoy yourself. It's just another day. You know, don't don't be stressed about it. And if you are in a relationship with somebody, (laughs) you know, don't go buying a whole bunch of craziness. Just show the person that you love them every day. That's it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. I actually kind of like that. That was that was pretty sweet. Carlton Banks, it's time for you to tell them why it's not unusual, brother. What you got? It's unusually hot this damn time of the year right now. I don't care what anybody says. I am sweating. All right. It's 60 degrees here in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and it's like, man, somebody send me some snow, for real. I need some snow. I mean, you know, I was, my, my people up in Jersey and whatever, you know, they got 40 inches, and we get nothing but some rain. I need some cold weather sent down here real soon so I can really feel like um, this is winter. But I digress. 
I am going through some serious, serious, serious withdrawal right now. I need football back. I need fo- football needs to be a year round sport for me. Um, honestly, it, I can deal without baseball. I can deal without uh, basketball. Hell, golf. Definitely can't follow golf because I don't get the understanding of chasing this little ball around this big course. And you're supposed to walk and not really ride a cart. Um, that's for I really need football to be pushed to a year round event. Um, right now, they're talking about making the field wider to make it more co- um, coincide, coincide with um, Canadian football. I mean, really? You really want to make it that much wider? It's, it's already hard enough to defend. You're going to add another player on the field, Mr. Goodell? Um, I really don't like Gaddafi Goodell. So uh, if, we could, if I could do without him for a whole season, it would be great. Um, but I do want my football back. I miss my NFL. Um, definitely going to be a Cowboys fan. Um, then moving the drafts to Thursday night, move one of our date nights with my boys. No, 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 no funny stuff talking about that, but they moved one of my date nights with the boys, hanging out with the fellas kind of thing. We can't do it in the middle of the week like we used to. Saturday, we, I guess we can still get together and, and chew on some wings and and stuff. So I think he's alluding to the fact that we used to get together on Saturday afternoons, chicken and and beer and yeah. and, and watch the the draft. The and draft. Then we can't it, do it. it they messed they us up. Yeah. yeah, they really messed us up. They put that second on a Thursday night. So, and at least I got that to look forward to. Other than that, just send me some cold weather, please. <laughs> can't stand this heat. I'm a winter baby. I celebrate the whole month. I was calling Banks. It's Carlton's corner. Ain't on half stabbing with Marcus J. Big Rube. It's time for you to do your thing, man. You ready to smash him? Big Rube, smash, and comes out his damn mind. We don't need no more cold weather. It may be February, but cold is not cool. Now, I'm speaking it. <laughs> now, today, of course, everybody knew what I was going to talk about. But I'm going to throw a little wrench in there, too. Because when it's all said and done, you know, my target of my non-affection is definitely Chris Brown. You know, it's kind of ironic that he crashed his Porsche on, you know, the same day a year ago that him and Rihanna got into it in a Lamborghini. Uh, kind of interesting. He was chasing for paparazzi. First of all, paparazzi, you're a bunch of idiots. But that's that's another story to tell. Um, two, you know... Could this dude have not done everything worse this week, this past week? So, you didn't do your community service. Nice faking it. And you got caught. You could possibly be the, the worst criminal ever. And then you decide to go up in the court with Rihanna on your side when she is the reason why you have community service. Yeah. That's probably not a good PR move. That's probably not a good move in general. And to be really perfectly honest, that possibly could be the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You get community service for hitting a woman. And a year ago after they say you faked your community service, you come into court with the woman that you hit. I don't know who's worse. You or her. You know, but if your PR people say you should do this, you need to fire them and start over. Because right now you're horrible. You sat in the Grammys. After Frank Ocean won a Grammy, everybody stands up, but you in your bright white suit, I guess that's supposed to mean some type of purity or whatever, with tattoos coming all out your neck. And then people's like, well, he did clap. Doesn't really matter. You didn't stand up. You were on the aisle seat. He had to pass you to get to the stage. Now he didn't. He probably should have because that just would have been great TV. But, you know, it's just... How much more can you? How much more damage can you do to your career? First of all, last year you hit Rihanna, whatever, whatever. You actually kept a lot of your fans, and she lost everything. And then she gets up on stage. Her first song, questionable. I didn't really look at it. I saw what she was wearing. Was it cool to me? And then, as we said earlier, she tried to do a salute to Bob Marley. Yeah, know the words next time you try and sing Bob Marley. You know, I don't know a lot of Bob Marley, but I know the words. And then you were just looking horrible up there anyway. Whatever, we're not talking about her today. But the big winner of the week of being terrible, you know, goes to old Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift 
has pretty much told everybody that she sucks. She's terrible. She's so terrible. How are you going to get on national TV, on the Grammys, the first act on the Grammys, everybody's watching you, and diss your ex-boyfriend? Are you kidding me? On national TV, you just diss your ex-boyfriend. Because she was with day one of the one of dudes from One Direction. And, and her never going to get back ever, ever. She did the boy part in British. Well, that's, I mean, last time I checked, most of the American public ain't that stupid. <laughs> if the dude speaks British and you used to date him and you don't date him anymore, then you do the boy part about never getting back together with you in British, you're probably talking about him. <laughs> Taylor Swift, get a grip. Get a grip. You go through guys like washing machines go through clothes. Really? And nobody stays with you. You keep breaking up or they keep breaking up. Regardless of what happens, you end up by yourself. You went from Younger to Joe Jonas. You went up to um, John Mayer, the biggest possible gigolo in the entertainment industry, who's now with Katy Perry. And then you came back down to One Direction around 18 years old. You're like 22, 23. Really? Really? If you go through all these dudes and you make songs about all these dudes, it's probably not their fault. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. You're going through guys like Wash Machine. You might want to slow it down a little bit. You might want to, hey, maybe I'm the problem. Go figure. You know. But then you get up on national TV and diss one of your, diss one of your ex-boyfriends. That's worse than writing a song about them. Come on, first of all, that's childish. And pretty much you from what I read, all these all the women, all the girls who just look up with you really realize that you're nothing but a B. Capital. So you probably messed yourself up on this one. Just saying. If anybody could have had a worse week, it's probably her. But Chris Brown tried to take it just like he normally does, you know. That guy's terrible. And Frank Ocean, once again, I don't understand Frank Ocean. He sings. The video was interesting. I don't know. He obviously played the piano, so he couldn't have been that hurt. Hey, not my thing. All I'm saying is, all y'all people out here, you got a lot of money, you got a lot of fame. How about we get a life? That might help you out a little bit. This is Big Rubes, a smash. And I, I really don't know where to go from there because I'm not hating. I'm just telling the truth. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. I appreciate Big Rube. And uh, I tell you, that was a rant. He was all over the place. But you know what? I agreed with pretty much everything uh, he said. So I want to go kind of thank everybody for being with us tonight. Obviously, we went way over as we did a couple of weeks ago. Not quite as long as we did then. But, you know, we had a a lot of stuff to get through. And I want to thank K-Dub for joining us tonight for two segments. The K-Dub report where we got into the National Basketball Association. And, of course, he joined us for what the hell. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Rashida Moore of Kiss Kiss Darling Boutique for joining us and sharing with us uh, the information about her black business or online business uh, as we celebrate Black History Month. Uh, I want to thank the Dating Pool Diva, author Charisma, for letting us know about the events that she's got coming up. We definitely want to make sure that we uh, support her and her next visit here on the show will be the Monday after that. So hopefully we'll have some good information that we can bring to you listeners uh, and that will encourage you to support her in the future. Uh, I want to go ahead and thank uh, everybody that was listening to us on Mix LR. I saw you out there, uh, author, Ray, author Desiree Monique. I saw you. I saw you said appreciate you guys listening to us week after week. Uh, I want to thank Carlton Banks for being here with us as he is week after week and bringing a spirited conversation we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable but that's my brother and i still love him i want to give a special thanks to big rube for being here with us as well uh and joining us as he does week after week and a special special guest uh to miss tony for joining us in her monthly spot uh here on ain't no has that with marcus J. she always uh brings it we appreciate it and she always makes the room a lot brighter when she's here than it is with just the three of us funny looking dudes so appreciate her joining us tonight i want to go ahead and end the show uh with my rant uh and as co- of course uh with it being black history month uh my rant as i had mentioned last week every single 
rant this month will focus on some aspect of Black History Month. And of course, this rant is no different. And as we sit in the middle of February, we know it's Black History Month. Of course, as a black man, I feel great pride and reverence for this time of year because it's the time of year uh, where we get to celebrate and focus on the contributions of black people uh, that we have contributed to the history and the experiences of all of us here in what I like to call the new world. Many folks, of course, are uninformed about the origins of Black History Month and the reasons for its necessity. You hear things like, quote, we don't need Black History Month. We should celebrate black history all the time. Or you hear, what difference does it make? It's the shortest month anyway. Or you hear the one that irks me the most. They gave us the shortest month. Almost as if the speaker is taking a shot at the organizers. So let's go ahead and dispel some of the misnomers about Black History Month. First, we absolutely do need Black History Month. The predominant history and the foundation of this country is European history. The history of this country's first immigrants who came here to start anew. We spend so much time in our youth learning about the Roman world dominance and the British world dominance and how great these eras and cultures were. And in some cases, the descendants of those cultures can actually trace their lineage right back to those folks they see in their history books. Because we as black people were stolen from our homeland and forced into bondage here in the new world founded by the European immigrants, our names were erased, our cultures eradicated, and our history was dissolved. It's because of our indomitable spirit and soul that with time, we were able to rise above the chains and bondage to contribute greatly in the world that was once foreign to us and became invaluable in virtual, virtually every aspect of this new culture. Inventing things as disparate but essential as the Almanac by Benjamin Banneker in 1791, the golf tee by George Franklin Grant on December 12, 1899, the horseshoe by James Ricks on March 30, 1885, the Traffic Light by Garrett Morgan on November 20th, 1923. And of course, Peanut Butter by George Washington Carver in 1896. Black History Month wasn't given to us because it was the shortest month. It wasn't like that at all. Black History Month had its beginnings in 1926 when historian Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History announced that the second week of February would be known as Negro History Week. This week was chosen because it marked the birthdays, of course, of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Woodson created the holiday with the hope that eventually it would be eliminated when black history would become fundamental to American history. In 1976, the federal government acknowledged the expansion of Negro History Week to Black History Month by the leaders of the Black United Students at Kent State University in Ohio in February of 1969. And the first official celebration of Black History Month occurred at Kent State in February of 1970. Six years later, during the bicentennial, the expansion of Negro History Week to Black History Month was recognized by the United States government by President Gerald Ford when he spoke in regards to this urging Americans to quote seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every era area of endeavor throughout our history end quote and while we love the acknowledgement and expansion conferred by the United States government it was a black man historian Carter G. Woodson who created Negro History Week, which became Black History Month, and because of the efforts of the Black United students at Kent State University, that Black History Month became nationally recognized. That's the Murr. Marcus is on a related rant, then it got nothing to do with what we're here talking about today. Once again, I want to dedicate tonight's show to the memory of Whitney Houston, who we lost one year ago today. Keep in mind, it's your independence that's essential to building your legacy. I want to say peace to all the stars and all the squares. In the abundance of water, the fool is thirsty. Those are the words of Bob Marley. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. You can follow us on MixLR. We're there every single week, and we will always be on MixLR. Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping.
Be back next week. Peace.